Today in our 2015 GMC Sierra 2500, you're going to be taking a look at, I'm going to show you how to install the Kurt Double Lock Flip and Store Underbed Gooseneck Hitch, part number C607-604. This is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. It's going to have a nice black powder coat finish. It's going to help resist any rust or corrosion. One thing that's nice about this hitch over some of the other ones is it's a double locking pin, unlike some of the other ones that are just a single pin. This is going to give you more stability on your hitch ball. In the closed pin, you're going to have a single handle that's going to come out uh, on your driver's side or passenger side. It's your choice. Uh, it gives you an option for both. It's going to be spring-loaded. You're also going to have spring-loaded safety chain hookups. You're going to have one on each side of your hitch ball. So we're going to have two crossbars. They're going to span from frame rail to frame rail. Your center section is going to attach to those two crossbars by eight half-inch bolts, lock washers and flat washers. Then you're going to have a frame bracket on the outside of each frame rail. This is our handle. To remove the pin, we're going to pull out, turn clockwise. That's going to lock your pin open. To close it, you simply just turn it and let it go. This is what our hitch looks like in the back of our truck. You can see your safety chain U-bolts. Come up right here and they're in the lower corrugation. That way you maintain access to your bed. You can see at the top of your hitch here sits nice and flush with this raised part of the corrugation. So again, we don't have anything really sticking up to get in the way of loading anything in and out of the back of the truck. Your kit's going to come with a hitch ball. You can see it's going to have a notch or a keyed section in it. That means the ball is only going to go into the hole one way. Drop it in like that. Again, turn your handle, lock it into place, then you're ready to go there. When you're not using your gooseneck, the good thing about it, you can take your ball, grab it by the handle, flip it over, and you can drop it down into place like that. Again, lock your pin and back into place. And now you have a storage spot for your ball. With that, you also have a cap that you can put into place to help keep any dirt, corrosion, or anything from getting down inside of there and maybe locking that ball into place. Now your hitch ball itself is gonna be two and five sixteenths. You're gonna have a 7,500 pound vertical load limit, which is straight up and down on the ball. You're gonna have a 30,000 pound gross trailer weight. However, I do recommend checking the owner's manual of your vehicle to make sure the vehicle can withstand that amount of weight. And I do recommend picking the lowest number between the two of them. Now, as far as the installation goes with this hitch, it is fairly straightforward. I do recommend having an extra set of hands to help lift this intersection into place though. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let me show you how to get it installed. First thing we need to do to start our installation we went ahead and removed our spare tire to give us a little more room. Next thing we need to do is we need to remove our heat shield for our spare tire. You're going to have two bolts. You're going to have one right here and one on the outside right here. Use a half inch socket and it'll help to use a swivel to get around your exhaust pipe here. We'll set it aside to be reinstalled later. Next thing we need to do is remove our heat shield that's on the bottom of our bed here. We have our rear cross member here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it. You can take, try to take these bolts out, but a lot of times they're rusted and uh, you won't be able to get them out, they'll break off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut in front of this rear cross member, all the way across. And then the front cross member, we're gonna cut it right along the back here. And we're gonna remove this center section. We can just take some 10 snips. Another thing that may work is if you have a rotary tool with a cutting blade on it or a Dremel tool with a cutting blade, you can use that. This metal's pretty thin, so it'll come out pretty easy. Go ahead and pull that section out, then we can dispose it. What I suggest doing is your edges here, if you take a hammer or some flat nose out, so we don't cut ourselves. Next thing you want to do is we want to take a half inch by 13 tap and your holes on your cross members, uh, when they powder coat them, you'll get a little, there's a little powder coat uh, inside on the threads. 
and that could cause your bolts to cross thread. So we want to clean those out. We'll take a half inch by 13 tap. If you don't have one of these, take one of your half inch bolts that come in your kit. And if you take your uh, a Dremel tool with a cutting blade and cut a few long sections in it, you can actually make a tap out of your bolt. Take your tap. You want to make sure you get this straight. Clean those threads up. Once you get them clean, take your bolt, run it down in there by hand, make sure it's going to go in nice and easy. And you're going to repeat that on the holes on both cross members. Now we're going to install our rear cross member. And you're going to identify it by the front one's going to have a little notch cut out of it right here. So what we're going to do is come on our passenger side and we're going to slide it in front of our hat channel for our bed. Slide it across like this. And we're going to span it between the two frame rails. And then we're going to rotate it to where it's standing up on end. We want to make sure that these are down towards the bottom of the vehicle. This. Now we'll put in our front cross member. And you can see the notch I was talking about. And this is going to go over your gas tank or your fuel tank. So we're going to slide it in the same way. Just like this. This one's going to go behind the front hat channel on the bed. Go over our fuel tank. Like this. And then we're going to rotate this one the same. You want to make sure that your holes are down towards the bottom. Next, we're going to install our frame brackets. They're going to look like this. Then you want this to be towards the front of the vehicle. It's going to sit just like that. So what we need to do is get our hardware from the inside of the frame uh, rail to the outside. In your kit, you're going to have a pull wire like this. And then large carriage bolt, spacer block. We'll take our spring in. We're going to go through each of the hole so with our spring out, we're going to take our hardware just like that and we're going to thread it onto our pull wire. Take our spacer block, we're going to feed it up into the hole first. Just like that. Then we'll take our frame bracket, go ahead and put this one in place here. Like this, feed our wire through. Just like that. And you're only going to get two of these wires, so make sure you don't uh, just pull it off. Unthread it so you can use them on the other side. We'll take a large flange nut. Go ahead and we'll just loosely install that for now. We're not going to tighten everything down just yet. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing with this back hole and our hardware. Next we're going to attach our crossbars here to our frame brackets. We're going to use half inch hardware or half inch hex bolt, a lock washer and a flat washer. What we want to do is we want to go from the inside onto the uh, cross arm. Remember there. And we're just going to finger tighten these in for now. Now one thing I want to mention in the instructions, it tells you to put these in after you put this in. I find it much easier to go ahead and put those in first rather than try to feed your pull wire through here, through that hole, and then out of the hole in the back. It's much easier to do it this way and then just put these in. Next, you're going to have a template in your kit like this. It's going to have an arrow with an F on it. The F is for front. This little hole here is going to be your pilot hole for your four inch hole that we're going to drill in the bed of the truck. So we're going to take two of our half inch bolts. We'll put it right up like this. Now we'll take a three quarter inch socket. We'll go ahead and tighten these into place. Next we're going to take a quarter inch drill bit. We're going to drill our pilot hole. Once you have your pilot hole drilled, you can remove uh, the template. 
Now I'm going to take a four inch hole saw and I'm going to open up my pilot hole that I drilled. Before I do that, you can either just use the uh, hole saw bit or what makes it a, a little bit easier is if you take a piece of plywood, make you a four inch hole in it, set it over the hole, and what this is going to do when you stand on this, it's going to keep your blade from jumping around. One thing I suggest once you drill your holes, take a file and just file the edges to get some of the burrs off. Once you get that filed, since this is a white truck and I don't have white paint, I'm going to take some clear coat. I'm going to spray over that bare metal to help uh, resist any corrosion later on down the road. Next thing we need to do, we're going to be putting in our center section. You can see our exhaust comes up right here. It's a little hard to get our center section in over top of this and up above our fuel tank. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this hanger right here off our exhaust so we can pry down on our exhaust a little bit. Spray it with some lubricant. We'll take a crowbar. Oh my God. We're going to pry this, pry the end of it off here. Should give us enough room to pull down on our exhaust. Now we're going to put our center section into place. You'll notice that our hole is toward one side more than the other on this uh, center piece. We want the side where this hole is closer to this edge toward the back of the vehicle. So we'll go up over our exhaust on our passenger side here. Now we got our center section in place. What we're going to do is we're going to put a bolt in on each side just to hold it while we install the rest of our hardware. Now we're going to use the same half inch hardware, lock washer, flat washer. And we're just going to get these in finger tight for now. Just like that. Now we can get the rest of our hardware in place. And all of our hardware that's connecting our center section to those cross beams are all going to be the same half inch, lock washer, flat washer, same combination. Now what I want to do is I took my ball off the package and I dropped it down inside of my hitch. In your kit with your center section, it's going to come with a little rubber seal. Now this is completely up to you, it's a matter of personal preference. It's going to be split and you can put it on this edge. Just makes it look a little nicer. Um, I like doing it because of that reason. But if you take your ball and you set it in there, before you tighten anything up, you can actually Move your hitch like that, take a flathead screwdriver, feed it down in there. And you can also put this on uh, before you put your center section in if you want. Uh, but I will say that this, this does sit snug against this rubber piece, so it may be a little bit tough to get it, get uh, your center section up there. It may take a few minutes to get it to fit right. So we're going to take a three quarter inch socket and we're going to tighten the hardware. We're going to start with our center section. We'll tighten these first and then we'll move out to the outside of our frame. Next, we'll tighten these two first. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Then we're going to tighten our bolts down to our frame, we're going to use a 15 16 socket. Then repeat that on the other side. Then we're going to torque all of our hardware to the specifications and the instructions, starting with the inside ones first. You're going to repeat that for all remaining hardware. Once you have the center section torqued down, you're going to come to the outside of the frame. You're going to torque these two bolts down first, or two nuts down, and then you'll torque these down. And you're going to repeat that on the other side. Next, we're going to drill out for our safety chains. You see how the corrugation raises and drops here? These two holes on the inside line up with this lowered corrugation, which is where we want our safety chain U-bolts to go 
in the bed of the truck. So we're gonna take a half inch drill bit and we're gonna drill one hole in each of the slots. I'm gonna use this, which is my half inch drill bit. I'm gonna start it with that. Then we're gonna do the same thing with these two. Now you can see that our exhaust is in the way. So what we'll do is we'll take a strap and I'll strap it around my exhaust and around my frame. And I'll get this pulled over as far as I can get it so I can get my drill bit straight up and down. Once you have your pilot holes drilled on the bottom, we'll come back up top, take our half inch drill bit and drill out the holes the remainder of the way. that test fit them once you know they fit again we'll take some clear coat we're gonna spray that bare metal and what you want is you want to be able to move these freely you don't want them to be hung up next you're gonna have four springs like this you're gonna have eight flat washers with larger holes in the center and then four lock nuts nylon lock nuts what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two of our washers we're gonna put one on, then our spring, and one on the bottom, and you're gonna install the lock nut. And then you're gonna repeat that for the other three. Next we'll take a three-quarter inch socket, and we're gonna tighten our lock nuts here, and we only want to tie them to where the center of the U-bolt is flush with its outside edge. Just like that. Next, we're gonna install our handle. We're gonna go in through this slot in this uh, frame bracket, and there's a hole in the center section. We're gonna slide it in like that, and then we'll go underneath. Now we're gonna take our double pin lock, slide it into place. We'll have a spring, two flat washers with smaller holes, and then your nut and bolt. So our flat washers are to give us space. So we'll put, you put one or two of them on. This is just to ensure that you're getting enough space in your spring to pull this all the way out. So we're gonna go ahead and put two of them on there. Like this, feed that right into our locking pin. We're gonna line up the hole in the locking pin. Bolt, nut. And we're gonna take a 5 sixteenths wrench and a 9 30 seconds wrench. Your 9 30 seconds wrench is going to go on the bolt side and your 5 sixteenths will be on the nuts. We'll go ahead and tighten that into place. Now we'll remove our strap, get our exhaust put back in place. Do it just the way we took it off. Spray down your uh, posts and your hanger with a little bit of lubricant. It'll make it slide out a little bit easier. Just like that. Now we can reinstall our heat shield. Once you get your heat shield back in place, reinstall your spare tire and you're ready to go. And that'll do it for a look at an installation on the Kurt Double Lock Flip and Store Underbed Gooseneck Hitch, part number C607-604 on our 2015 GMC Sierra 2500.